A very warm welcome to all the NRI Samai listeners. Today we have a very special guest, Mr. Shobit Mathur, uh, who is currently the Executive Director of Vision India Foundation. So, sh- hello Shobit. Hi Pradeep. Uh, how are you Shobit? I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah. Shobit, uh, your journey is a very inspiring journey. I, I came across your journey. You, you're an IIT alum. Later you went, you went on to University of Washington. You're a very good techie, but you went on to Amazon. Then suddenly you came back to India. You went on to Youth for Seva. Then now currently Vision India Foundation. Shobit, what inspired you to take the decision to come back to the motherland and completely join a different sector, like a social sector? Right. I had gone to the US after completing my B.Tech from IIT Bombay to yeah. do my master's uh, and I completed my master's. Yeah. Um, I took a short break after my master's and very few people know about this. I went to a small country called Suriname in South America yeah. and I volunteered there for two months and I joined uh, Amazon.com. Uh, yeah. as a, I was there and uh, during five years I was there and I had a strong longing to have primarily in the back to our country contributing there. And definitely my brief volunteering experience uh, in Suriname was very important because it taught me that uh, taking a break away from job, right? Imagine uh, that we study for about 20 years of our life only to go and earn and then I don't take up my first job. I delayed by a couple of months uh, and decided to volunteer. <laughs> That's very inspiring, you know. Yeah, even I didn't know that you went to that Latin America for a short break. Uh, Shobit, like when you came to India, like what did you do? Like you meet, you what is your thought process? Like you want to join some organization or like, like did you travel or what did you do? Like when you came back to India, did you pre-plan it in US only or like when you came here, then you thought of that? Yeah, so uh, all of us, I mean, make plans and uh, assuming such as uh, IIT and uh, we plan for life. So we made a lot of plans and I also made plans that uh, if you remember it was in 2005 that the got the Nobel Peace Prize yeah. and uh, social entrepreneurship was very very popular. I mean in the first decade of the century, uh, social entrepreneurship was a big buzzword. So I felt that I should also go back to our country and do something in that sector. And I had some plans in mind, um, So, but the more it was not really concrete. I thought I'll come back and do something. So when I came back to India, what I realized is uh, the reality is very different. I mean, uh, making a business plan work on the ground is very difficult as compared to what you would have on paper. Uh, so that idea is immediately paperized, I should say. They didn't work out uh, to the uh, extent I had planned. So all the Excel sheets and all those things are not valid once you see the realities on the ground. So I felt if I have to know more about the country, I have to travel. And any person who has done well in his life has definitely travelled a lot because travel brings a great experience. So I travelled uh, across the country, uh, right from the corners of northeast in Arunachal all the way up to Leradar and different parts. About three months uh, in various uh, phases, I travelled and I met a lot of people. And what many people told me was uh, India needs young people like me and all of us in fact uh, to contribute back. Because most people running various, uh, I should say, uh, Seva projects or uh, somewhere they are trying to contribute back to society are typically in their senior age group. 
and they felt the younger people with more energy and brighter ideas uh, would bring a different uh, energy altogether to the kind of work they are doing. Everybody said come and work with us, but then I felt if I go and join one of them, I'll be just one of them, right? Yeah. Rather, why not uh, build a platform where yeah. I could engage many more people like me yeah. to people who need uh, our kind of uh, ideas or energy. Yeah. So that's where the idea of youth for seva came in. Yeah. Where we could take the platform where uh, young people could get time. Wow, it's fantastic. So yeah, very inspiring. You know, I, even I agree. If you travel a lot, you'll actually learn a lot. So show with like what what actually Youth for Seva does. Like, can you mention to the listeners few of the achievements that Youth for Seva did in the past few years? Right. So uh, I think Pradeep, if you see fundamentally in our country, we say we are a very young country, and it is very true. About sixty five percent of the population is under the age of thirty five, yeah. and uh, this is a huge chunk of population. And lot of this population uh, is now migrating away from their uh, home, uh, like towns, and going to bigger cities to work and all that. So what happens when they get into professional life uh, is that they have a lot of spare time uh, because they are not in their hometown and they are just working and the weekends are probably free. So uh, there is a huge chunk of population which wants to give back to the country, and they have free time, but they are not participating in this uh, nation building process as we call it because they don't know where to contribute, how to contribute, or would they find like-minded people to join them and if they could work together as a team. So these are very simple questions because of which uh, we are unable to engage uh, their talent and their energy. So uh, we felt, I mean. Me along with uh, one of our co-founders in Bangalore, uh, we felt that building a platform like this, where uh, for any amount of time you can give, we will find the appropriate opportunity for you in the place where you are staying, in your area of your interest. So you could say, I would like to uh, help out um, uh, terminally ill patients in a nearby hospital. Okay. And we will find the right uh, opportunity for you. So, Youth for Seva is nothing but just a platform to connect people who can give their time to people who need their time. So, uh, and of course, there's a bit of training involved in between. Yeah. So, we uh, we so we are basically canalizing the young energy of the country to positive work. Right. Yeah. From there, they can contribute voluntarily. So yeah. that is why it's called Youth for Seva. Yeah. Uh, it was started in Bangalore. Uh, I started as a chapter of that. And then now it is a nationwide platform uh, for young people to contribute to it. Very interesting, very interesting. Uh, Shobit, uh, like, you know, for people in India, if, even many people I know, they want to do something for the society, even they will look for platforms. But you created a platform. Like, how challenging it is to create a platform rather than getting into a platform. And like, even when getting into Youth for Seva, I think there should be some challenges from the volunteers also. They might say that we have exams on board. Like, we can't give every time. Like, you know, we have some other reasons they might have mentioned. So, how did you overcome such kind of challenges? Right. So, uh, yeah, you are right that creating a platform is very difficult because uh, you need to work on both ends at the same time. Uh, because you have a lot of volunteers, but if you don't have volunteering opportunities, the volunteers drop out. You have a lot of opportunities, but you don't have the people, then there's no point. So we need to create uh, both ends at the same time, keep uh, adding uh, opportunities and keep adding people. So that was a challenge. And uh, the other big challenge was I had come back to Hyderabad after almost uh, eight years, eight or nine years, because five years in the US and four years at IIT Bombay. So I, I lost touch with the city. I came back after nine years and uh, I had to reconnect back and a lot of my friends, all of them are now in different parts of the world so I didn't have any friends to start with. So one by one building the network, that was very challenging. Uh, but that went well. Uh, I think uh, started on both ends, started simply with government schools at one end and uh, as you rightly said, students are very difficult to handle life really. Because students have various commitments, uh, they have exams, they have to go back to their hometown, festivals, so many different things keep coming in. So we focus primarily on young professionals. Uh, young professionals have a very structured time, it is more predictable in the sense. And uh, they also bring the level of professionalism in them. Because working yeah. in a corporate environment adds some discipline. So we work with young professionals and uh, simply government schools to begin with 
later on we expanded to uh, college students but i think still the bulk of the volunteers we have even today are young professionals so choosing simpler uh, i mean uh, target audience that was very important and choosing simple opportunities like teaching in school mm-hmm. which did not require a whole lot of training or complicated so and then building on that and adding more and more things that was what we did and uh, that has worked well for us very interesting yeah even i agree you know selecting the, we have some professional background that would actually help you bringing that thing into the system uh, you know after youth for seva again you went to isb right uh, so w- w- what is that decision is that something like you want to learn something in the social entrepreneurship or like what made you decide to go to isb again from youth for seva right so i think uh, and you also know that if you are in a non-profit space, yeah. particularly it is not a very, uh, what should I say, a space which grows rapidly. Actually, yeah. uh, any amount of work, today if you do any charitable work, there are a lot of people who appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, but uh, slowly over a period of time, um, your skill sets are not very enhanced because you are doing uh, the same kind of work for a lot of time. So it gets stagnated. Unlike in a corporate environment where you're constantly pushed to keep learning and keep doing better and better, uh, somehow there is a kind of uh, status quo in the non-profit space. That is point number one which I realized that I have to go and also put yourself and learn this is something that is happening new. Uh, that was one. But more importantly, I think by doing a lot of volunteer work and engaging a lot of volunteers, what I realized is in this country, if we have to solve the problems which our country is facing, and we know that the problems are huge. Any sector we take, the problems are huge. Uh, the NGO True. or the civil society space will never be able to do it. I know this is a very strong statement, but uh, just imagine that uh, we are going and teaching in schools. So if you actually think why we are teaching in schools, it is because the teacher is not coming or the quality of teaching is not up to the mark. Yeah. And uh, I can tell you the experience we have had that any number of volunteers will never solve this problem. Yeah. Uh, this is a reality which uh, the NGO sector has to realize yeah. that uh, we are only filling gaps and gaps created through policy, um, I mean uh, wrong policies or uh, shortfalls in government. Yeah. So and we cannot keep filling gaps because many of the things which India is facing only the state can solve it. Yeah. The state comes with uh, the scale, the state comes with a huge amount of resources yeah. and the state is permanent. Yeah. It, is, it is going to be there for a long time. Yeah. So I realize that uh, unless uh, our movement becomes huge, uh, it's not going to solve the problem. And more importantly, change should also trickle from top down, not just bottom up. So policy shortfalls, government shortfalls have to be fixed. So with that intention, I think two intentions, one is to learn what, what is what uh, the new things that, that are happening in this world. They sometimes we miss being in the non-profit sector. And second thing is, how do we build top down change? How do we build organizations that can bring systemic change? To learn these two things, I felt uh, going back to school is important. And uh, my thinking has always been very strategic and I think in building platforms. So I said that MBA is probably the most appropriate thing for me. No. So that's why I went back to this school. Yeah, that's yeah. That yeah. Even I agree. In fact, government is the biggest uh, non-profit you can call it uh, in India. So any right. impact that you can do in policy space or anything in the government that would impact a lot than any other NGO. Uh, right. Shobit, again, uh, you been you started again. Like we, even Vision India Foundation, you are now the executive director. When we heard Vision right. India is right. doing a lot of thing in policy making, that is what you are talking about for the past one minute. Right. Uh, can right. you tell in a brief like what is Vision India Foundation's like motto and what is it doing for the past two years? Oh, Vision India Foundation uh, again uh, it builds on what I was doing earlier in the sense of engaging young energy in nation building. But uh, I mean, I think uh, one uh, uh, I have always been in touch with youth and uh, seeing what their aspirations are. What I most during the 2014 Lok Sabha elections and before that the Delhi elections, uh, a lot of young people want to be a part of the change. In, even in terms of policy making, in terms of getting involved in politics, but they are not getting the right 
right platforms. So if you see the best thing we can tell them is go out and vote. And uh, lot of young people went out and vote and they uh, toppled door bets and uh, gave a different mandate. But once things happen post election, uh, all the young people are in conduct and disconnected because they don't know how to contribute. I mean, okay, voting in one part has happened once in five years, but how do we be a part of the change ourselves? So there was no platform at that point of time for young people to be a part of policy making, be a part of delivering good governments, or be a part of politics. So, and the huge population which we have, I felt if we don't give them the right direction, again we will miss out on them. So, Vision India Foundation took birth with that uh, intention in mind, that how can we train, groom uh, young change agents, particularly in public policy and governance space. And in the long run, uh, how do we fill uh, the vacuums uh, in leadership? If you see, even today, uh, there is a huge challenge. I mean, uh, we can barely count on our fingertips. Uh, uh, leader in the political spectrum who we can look up to. Uh, sure. Anywhere in the bureaucracy or in the political system, anywhere we see in the space uh, with very few people we can really look up to. Sure. So how do we uh, create the future leadership of this country sure. uh, who are strong, sincere, committed uh, to be uh, to contribute positively to our country. Sure. So with that intention, uh, we a foundation to work and uh, we have a very simple focus. We say we want to invest on building change agents for India. And for that, we have designed various programs, uh, training programs, the research we do on that. And yeah, that's our single point focus to create an army of change agents for India. Yeah, very interesting, you know, creating an army of change agents. That's very powerful words that you put out. Sure, like if you see public policy, uh, we don't like in India, for example, we have only engineering, basically engineering or doctors or like with other law or something like there, there is very less talk about public policy at least in the education system or whatever so and when whenever there are very few schools of public policy that and mo most of the schools are abroad rarely we find schools in india about public policy or liberal arts or something so do you see a huge need right now about public policy schools in india no, I see. Uh, I don't see a need for a lot of public policy schools because uh, you are right. In India, at least uh, my generation, uh, we choose jobs which can free us. Yeah. And uh, because we, uh, the middle class was just coming out of uh, long term. I mean, they wanted to create wealth and all these things. So, uh, public policy even today in our country is not a job uh, creating thing. Yeah. It's not going to provide jobs for the people. Yeah. So it is still very academic. There are a few think tanks uh, who might probably take people from the start out. Yeah. But overall, it cannot absorb a huge bulk of people. Yeah. So uh, I would not say that we need. Uh, so the whole this whole space is more in that sense very entrepreneurial. Yeah. Right. The space is slowly opening up. The space is becoming very professional. Yeah. You can this right from political campaigns to. Yeah. Uh, uh, government hiring private talent uh, to think tanks coming up now uh, to a lot of young people wanting to enter politics. Yeah. There are various uh, ways slowly the sector is opening up. The sector was closed for a lot of time. Yeah. So uh, what I believe is the public policy courses being offered uh, not just in India and abroad are in that sense very spiritual. Mm. They give you a lot of theory yeah. but the space needs entrepreneurs. Yeah. Not just uh, theoretically sound people. Yeah. Because uh, you want to start your own party, you want to uh, manage somebody's campaign, you want to manage somebody's constituency, you want to uh, uh, contest politics yourself, you want to be a good bureaucrat. All this needs leadership training, not just policy education. So there is a need for good public leadership school, not just public policy school. So uh, I think that is the need and uh, that is slowly being realized. And the Vision India Foundation in the long run also wants to create a kind of a leadership training institute, uh, which is at world class standards, where uh, we create the future leaders of our country. And mm. they could be any domain. They could, uh, yeah, really? uh, contribute to the country in any domain. But that is what is needed. Yeah. Not just theoretical understanding of things, it's uh, in the degree granting. Yeah, I, I agree. Leadership is ultimately the key, no matter how much theoretical knowledge you have. 
Shobit, uh, can you brief us like uh, what is that policy boot camp that you're trying to do? Like you're bringing young leaders like mostly from college grads and like working professionals for 21 days. You're getting them trained. Uh, like uh, what after the training? What are you trying to do with that 21 days? What are you trying to do with that 150 people? just out of uh, vision in your foundations so, like you coming from a technique technical background and like even you mentioned 2014 elections you know a lot of social media has uh, shown its very big presence in 2014 elections and a lot of technology like big data and other things coming into play in both politics and governance so how do you see technology as a tool uh, we, like you know pe- young minds can come with their technology you know influencing the governments or influencing the decisions that make in public policy or whatever right so you are right the technology has personally transformed all our lives I mean very fact that we are doing the phone interview and now this is going to be telecast around the world but it has changed that technology has come a long way and uh, personally all our lives have uh, fundamentally changed but somehow in the whole space of delivering good governance to people, uh, technology is still lagging far, far behind. And we can see this very easily, just go to any government website or any of these things. We feel with the help of technology, a lot of things could be done much better, cost could be reduced, better transparency, better accountability could be brought in. But this is not happening currently. But there is a need and it has been understood very well. And more importantly, people are asking for it. So people are asking for e-governance, people are asking for mobile governance, people are asking for more transparency. And uh, so this is happening because if the people ask for a change, automatically change has to come. And that is how the government is also responding. You are right, in terms of campaign, definitely I think a lot of technology was used, a lot of analytics was used. A uh, lot of analytics is now currently being used with, uh, as we know, uh, with the Aadhaar system and having a lot of uh, citizens' information on it. So yeah. the schemes can be better targeted, better designed. So it's a huge, huge opportunity, uh, not just big data analytics, but even very simple things. 
how do we deliver governments using mobile phones yeah. how do we gover- deliver better governments using uh, the connectivity of internet we have today yeah. so very low hanging fruit that they call it right very simple innovation can be done and yes. i think that is where young people with bright ideas can definitely contribute very so there is a huge space for technology and fortunately being from a technology background i can see this trend emerge and uh, we can design uh, our activities or our interventions appropriately yeah so yeah very true even with technology you can do lot of lot of things for your motherland it's not just volunteering even with your own core technological interest you can do a lot so if, 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 is vision india foundation doing something about technology like are you promoting technology in governance or like any other things yeah so uh, uh, we are we are uh, we have a few research areas where we are focusing on Uh, one of the research area is urban governance okay. so we are uh, consulting to few municipal corporations uh, in uh, designing their smart city projects so that is where uh, technology definitely we are using but uh, other things uh, as you have seen the boot camp is there for 21 days but we don't want it to just reach this 150 people we want it to go online and reach the thousands and lakhs of people across the world so uh, we are going and planning for also kind of conducting these programs in a mooc format where more people can benefit from it mm-hmm. so uh, simple interventions are definitely we are uh, uh, reaching out to the government particularly urban local bodies that the municipal corporation i'm trying to assist them but the more importantly in our training programs uh, to expand our reach we would want uh, to use more and more of technology and reach out to a much wider audience so but definitely people who have ideas uh, one other focus area we have is data driven governance and uh, what it means is how do we use big data analytics because lot of government data is now slowly coming online yeah. so we are trying to also see how analytics can be used in designing better policies designing better governance solutions so there is a lot of scope but particularly on these two fronts i think are in focus is there how do we design better cities using technology and second thing is how do we analyze government data and give them feedback about how their policies can be designed better no yeah very true that should be a very interesting intervention by vaf Uh, shobit like can you please uh, like i i heard that you are even planning for world expedition right like because you want to understand the governance in other parts of the world not just in india so can you brief to the listeners what is that about world expedition by vaf about right so we are uh, planning a world governance expedition uh, this is uh, uh, i mean a delegation of about 20 25 people who will be chosen from across the world and uh, this year's focus is on the us so we'll be in the us in the first half of october october 2nd october 15 on the east coast of the us which is right from boston all the way uh, through new york dc uh, north carolina up to atlanta so we'll be starting on october 2nd in boston and ending in atlanta on october 15 and studying various uh, models we'll be studying cities we'll be studying international agencies like the un the world bank we'll be studying the public library system we'll be studying the supreme court uh, so we'll be studying the good governance models uh, in us we'll be studying the campaign uh, and then we'll be taking home uh, to our respective countries this message about how these best practices could be mapped uh, to the problems in our respective countries so that's the idea and probably uh, subsequent years we'll be choosing different countries so it's not just that the delegation learns from within themselves but they also on the field go and learn about the best models in this world and uh, document them do uh, in depth research and take them back uh, and map it to the respective countries So that's the idea. Probably, uh, as far as we know, it's perhaps the first of its kind in the world, yeah. where a uh, delegation is only going to go and study governance models. Yeah. So there have been other things which are being done, but uh, that's why we are calling it the World Governance Expedition. More details are there on the website, which is IndiaFoundation. dot com, and yeah. so we can check it out there. Yeah, very interesting. Even I, I never heard about you know world delegation going on exclusively for understanding the governance and all. So, are you planning only for US, or like, are you planning for other places like Singapore and other places where they're doing really good on urban government and other things? Yes. So, this year our focus is on the US, particularly also it being the election year in the US. 
But next year uh, we are still open. We have not yet planned. It could either be Southeast Asia, which is Singapore, or it could also be Europe. So it depends. Uh, we have to uh, see. It's the first attempt we are doing, so we learn from this and then probably choose a different country next year. Yeah, very interesting. Very interesting. Like I always like the quote, if you know, like politics is not a dirty game. Only the players are dirty. and like we generally youth generally tend of saying that politics is dirty but we don't talk about that we just criticize the people over there and it's not our game so how do you see the importance of youth coming into politics right so uh, i think uh, the politics was there to definitely in india for a long time and there is that there is a reality to it and our parents generation has definitely faced uh, the worst of it but uh, i think with the uh, young people as we all keep saying about young india the constituency finally is young people i mean every person out there wants to appeal uh, to the younger segment so if you have seen the discourse has changed from uh, one rupee rise to i think in, in this my lifetime i have seen it now more on road wifi jobs right the better facilities more infrastructure yeah. startups So this is the kind of focus uh, of the political class today, yeah. because they know that the young people have a say, and they are the ones who we have to please or displease. Yeah. So we have gone beyond, uh, I would say, in that sense, uh, simple issues which earlier people were doling out welfare schemes to something which is empowering people and producing long-lasting uh, impact on the country. So once that happens, young people definitely have a role to play, because we are the ones who have the brightest ideas. Yeah. we have the awareness about what happening in the world yeah. so anything uh, the, even the political parties are today targeting young people to come and join them yeah. because they have to get this idea without this idea they will not be able to win again True. so i think it is probably historically very rare that an opportunity like this comes where uh, young people are being asked to come and join especially young people with a lot of great ideas so i think this is an opportunity a lot of us should take use of yeah very true i completely agree on this thing people should definitely use this opportunity and now the media is with them there is no there is no point of like telling them we don't have access to media and all they can use their only they can use their own social media uh, shobit uh, coming out of this vision india and all like i think there is a lot of personal transformation in you like coming from us quitting amazon and coming back and youth for save now vision india So for the past five years or down the line, like, uh, like what is your biggest learning in your life that you want to share it with our listeners and all? Uh, there is, uh, I think, uh, one thing which I definitely have with many times in our life, uh, we don't, um, I mean, uh, introspect or think why we are doing what we are doing. We are mostly driven by our peers or family. Or some immediate compulsion we have, and uh, I think uh, if we just sit back and think that uh, where is my life headed, what am I doing? I think that's when most of us can step out of the race, as we call it, and uh, start our own courses. So I think that is something I feel uh, I was fortunate uh, to have uh, done that. And of course, there are huge challenges. Anything which is done out of uh, the regular field, uh, uh, right? Comes with lot of challenges. You have to convince family, you have to convince friends. You have first of all convince yourself that what you are doing is right. Because once the challenges hit you, to stay on course is very difficult. So you have to build that conviction. So these are different things. But at the end of the day, once you handle all the rough weather and come out of it, you will feel very satisfied because you know that every day has a purpose. Why you are doing things. So that is the greatest, I think, the blessing or the thing I have been able to accomplish in my life. That uh, I was at the age of 27 when I quit US, came back to India, and handled the kind of uh, turmoil for the next three years. And now I am in a position where uh, I feel good about what I am doing. I think that is something everybody should uh, think about, and uh, they consciously choose what they want to do. Many times we unconsciously choose what we want to do. So consciously choosing uh, our calling and pursuing it sincerely is very very fruitful. Uh, I think uh, that is worth the effort uh, it should put in. So that is the only thing I would suggest many people who are listening to this to truly pursue. 
Wow. That's fantastic. Consciously choose your calling and pursue it truthfully. Very powerful words. Like, uh, like, do you, how do you get this kind of mindset? Like, is that, do you read something or do you follow? Like, do you do any spirituality, something like that? Like, like, is just you're out of your practice or how do you get such kind of thoughts or mindsets? No, I think, yeah, so I also have a spiritual practice. Uh, that thing, I think, uh, something which keeps you stable, uh, it, it adds some clarity to life. Uh, so I practice yoga, uh, I mean, I'm not very regular, but uh, form of uh, Kriya I practice every day. That is one, but more importantly, I think uh, we have to be aware. I think awareness is something which nobody else can give you. You have to build that awareness yourself. So you have to observe very carefully about uh, what you're doing, what's happening in your mind, uh, what are others around you doing, and where are you headed. I think. Uh, the very fact that you should be able to look at yourself from outside and see what is uh, happening, is it happening uh, in the right direction or not. That is the skill which each of us have to develop. The power of uh, observation and awareness. Uh, are they consciously choosing? And you got that word. So consciously doing. Are we doing things consciously or are we already just doing it out of routine? So that is something which uh, we should all uh, look into. Uh, you should definitely have a spiritual practice, I suggest this to many people because it keeps you very stable. It keeps you, I mean, uh, many times when we go through rough periods in time, it gives you some clarity. And reading, I think reading is also very important. Uh, I would, uh, I mean, we read a lot of fiction, but I would suggest reading some biographies definitely helps because we see some other people's lives and we relate to them and that helps us take decisions sometimes. Yeah. Uh, so these are the some things which uh, I think uh, has to be chosen again. Many yeah. times we don't choose these things. We just True. do whatever is popular. Yeah. So choosing these small things in life is very important. Yeah, very true. In fact, many leaders have something spirituality with them that actually carries them ahead. Uh, even I believe on that. Shobit, uh, one last thing. Do you, What is the message that you want to give it to our listeners here? Like anything about your journey or anything about vision in your foundation any message that you want to give to the listeners it's been a wonderful interview so far so i'm not uh, i don't know if i'm in a position to give any message but yeah. uh, i think uh, overall it's uh, the interview if i would want to conclude in some way i would just say that whatever we choose to do in life if you choose to do something which is beyond ourselves i think uh, that is the, the biggest thing because it helps to grow it gives you a lot of satisfaction so my entire journey right from the youth for seva or even what i did in south america or i'm doing now is not just for my immediate needs so all of us can make a living for ourselves that is no problem and i think all the listeners of this show are very healthy very currently there but uh, choosing to live a life which is beyond ourselves i think whatever that goal could be that goal should not be limited only to us. If that goal could be bigger, right? Like I know that you are working on climate change and other people are working differently. Just choose something which is beyond yourself. I think that uh, that itself is a very fulfilling life to have. So think about it and uh, make a goal of life which is beyond immediate yourself. So that is, I would say, my message to the listeners. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shobit. So here is the message, listeners, choosing to live a life beyond yourself. That's so powerful. And if you want to know about more about Vision India Foundation, please go www.visionindiafoundation.com. They're doing a fantastic job with Policy Bootcamp, Good Governance Yatra, and World Expedition. That's a wonderful platform for all of us to explore there. Uh, thank you so much once again, Shobit, for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Bye.